Running a business of any kind can be difficult, especially if you've never had someone guide you and hold your hand and teach you things on this business journey that you need to know. But in today's video, we are going to talk about the different types of business entities, some things that you didn't know about the IRS, what you need to be doing as an entrepreneur or a business person, and we're going to get all of this tea from somebody who used to work at the IRS. Let's get into it. Welcome back to another episode of the Key Andre Jackson Show. I can't even believe that I had the opportunity to bring my next guest expert on this show for you today because we're going to be talking about legal hacks, businesses, small businesses, entities, S Corp, LLC, sole proprietors, all of the above. Listen, if you've never heard of those things where you are going to want to sit back and get your popcorn because this is going to be an episode that is going to be so informative. Make sure you're taking notes, grab your notebook. Do what you need to do because you are going to walk away with gym after gym. I have none other than the amazing Chanel Simmons with me today. Not only is she my tax lady, but she is far more than just a tax anything. She is a six time author. She got more books than me. She is an IRS resolution practitioner, an economic development advocate. She is a business consultant, a corporate trainer and workshop facilitator. She is also a financial educator. And like I already mentioned, she is a former IRS agent and trainer. So you know she got the inside scoop and the tea. Please allow me to welcome to the Keandra Jackson Show, Chanel Chanel, Chanel, Chanel. Thank you so much for being a guest on the Keandra Jackson Show. I am excited to have you here with me today. I'm excited to be here today. <laughs> oh my gosh. This whole entire episode, we have been talking about business, taxes, side hustles, what to do, what not to do. And I'm like, look, we just need to bring the woman on here who has all of the answers, who has helped me get my whole life together. Okay, even before this, we was figuring out some tax stuff. So I just knew that you were the perfect person for this specific topic. And I know that you're going to bring gym after gym and really bless the people with some of the knowledge and the expertise that you have in this area. I'm here to serve, I'm here to serve. <laughs> I love that mentality. So. For those of us who don't know, for those of us who just played a little bit in the business space, for those of us who are just doing different things, can you break down to us and kind of share with us briefly, what are some of the real business types and structures that are legal entities for businesses and kind of like what is their differences? Because there's some people who are like, oh, I'm an S Corp, I'm a C Corp, I'm an LLC, I'm a sole proprietor. And many people don't know what those things mean. So in a quick way, can you share with us kind of like each of those so people will know where they land? So the biggest one that I believe that is the absolute most confusion, believe it or not, is the sole proprietorship. And the reason why I say that is because literally the moment that you say that I am available for you to purchase a service or a product from me, you are a sole proprietorship. So that's why it, it it's a personal irritation of mine when people actually say side hustle, because I'm like, first off, what you're trying to do when I hate, when I talk to people, what you're trying to do is not something that you disregard. Therefore, it's not something that you put to the side, right? And you are always trying to ask questions. You're getting mentors, you're getting professionals, you're investing your time, money and talent. Doesn't sound like a hustle to me. It sounds like something that you're trying to align. So I really wish people will stop using the word side hustle and start treating the thing, even if it's not something that you put all of your effort to, even if it's a part-time venture, listen to some of the words I'm gonna use right now, part-time venture, uh, another business opportunity. Uh, you know, you're a serial entrepreneur. If you ever really notice those who are very serious about business, they never regard any activity, business activity, another word, <laughs> um, as a hustle. They never even associate that word with themselves because all money matters, right? So therefore, the moment that you start, I'm a, a huge, huge um, advocate and believer of how we start something is how you're going to finish it. So therefore, incorporate the habits that you have for what you eventually see yourself wanting to do from the moment that you say, I'm available 
for you to buy from me. No, you don't have a hundred clients, but what will it look like when you do? If you think you're going to need client numbers, why not start with client number one and set up that process and then perfect it as you go? Um, if you have it where you want people to start paying you from, you know, via maybe a payment processor, okay, pick one. Stripe is out there. PayPal's out there. And then pick one as you go. You know, I know some people use Zelle and all that. That's fine. Pick that as you go. Get a bank account. I don't care if you only are getting $5, $10, $20 a transaction. Get a bank account from the beginning. Notice I haven't even mentioned anything about LSE. You know why? Simply because of the fact that the moment, because I'm going to tell you, the IRS looks at you as a business from the moment that you start generating money, whether it's a single dollar. And even if you haven't gotten a dollar, because you said I'm available to provide this service or provide this um, product to you. And to just kind of reel that home real quick, if you are still kind of like, yeah, but I was told, listen to this. When you see a Walgreens, a Circle K, hey, my folks in the South. <laughs> I, we got Circle K's in Cali. We got Circle K's out here. Okay, Cali too. Hi, Cali. <laughs> you know, well, you know, the Wild Wilds in Pennsylvania and, you know, Royal Farm, wherever you are, 7-Eleven. When you see one being built, right, do you question when they put that sign up that it's coming, that it's a business? No, you do not. When they break ground and they're building everything, you don't question that it's a business. You say, oh, this new one is being built. Cool, right? When they put the little man up there blowing in the wind, they say they're training people and you see them putting all the equipment stuff in. They still haven't made a single dollar. They spent plenty. They're keeping track of all of that. Do you question if they're a business? And then the moment that they say, sure, you can pump your gas or you can buy your purchases and all that stuff here. They start making the money. Guess what? They have recorded everything. They're going to report their tax return. They're most likely going to have a loss, meaning that they're going to have more expenses than they are going to have income, depending upon when they open and how much they've spent. But they're going to report all of that and they're going to take advantage of those losses because it's something that they can use in the long term against future profit. That can be you. And it should be you, but you got to start from the very beginning, treating your business like a business, even as a sole proprietorship. All an LLC is, is just basically paperwork at that point. And you basically saying that I don't want to have legal responsibilities come on to me if someone decides to sue me. Now, someone like my dear Keandra here, you know, she, she is a therapist. You know, and therefore, you know, it's a possibility. I don't, I know she wouldn't, but you know, people getting their feelings for real. <laughs> <laughs> and they may, you know, and then, you know, same thing with those of us in finance, other lawyers, there's certain professions, I would say mechanics, where the likelihood of being sued is a little higher than maybe someone who was selling lip balm and lashes. It could still happen but the likelihood is probably a little less. You can still get it for your own peace of mind and for your own business structures and such, but it's there for you. But do keep in mind, insurances are also something that you're gonna still need to carry on top of that. It's called limited liability corporation. So always keep in mind that you have to have insurance on top of it. Talk to your attorney. They can talk to you more about it, more in depth on what's good for you. Uh, S corporation is just a tax, um, election. It is not a legal business entity. It's just really for tax purposes only. Um, it, this is why you can be the other business types, which is, a, which is an LLC, a partnership. I'm gonna get into that. I'm saving that for a minute and, um, a corporation because of the fact that what the law will allow for you to say, okay, we recognize that as an actual business entity. S corporation is something that the IRS came up with 
for those who have businesses that are US based. Um, there's some ver very strict rules about it, but it does provide tax advantages. One of the biggest ones is that it helps you um, mitigate, it doesn't completely eliminate, but it does help lower some of those employment taxes, the self-employment taxes, which is very helpful, um, especially when it's just you um, running your business and such. So once you reach a certain profit point, there's a lot of rules and a lot of maintenance and a lot of fees, LLCs as well. <laughs> and, having those, it. <laughs> and having these structures. Um, a partnership, basically, if there's more than one of you who own your business, by default, you will be a partnership, right? That's where you will start. And you can decide from there if you wanna be an S corporation for tax purposes only. Legally, the only other route for you to go is a corporation after that, because there's more than one of you. One kind of works like a sole proprietorship as well as an LLC, it's just that there's more than one of you. So everything gets split. You and your partner or partners will decide what that split will look like. So there's a whole slew of rules and everything that goes into that, but that's basically what it is. So not one of you is carrying the burden of the profits or, or even the losses, it gets split amongst you. And then the last one is corporations, other than S Corp. Um, there's different kinds of corporations, but the main one that a lot of people are familiar with and the standard one is called a C corporation. And all that is, is that it's saying that that business is its own legal person, basically, if you will. You will have to maintain a board and um, it's taxed on its own. So that's where you hear that double taxation. Um, it's taxed on its own because any dividends, if it's a profitable corporation and it gives its shareholders, which is would be you and any others who are invested in the business um, dividends, they could possibly be liable to taxes as well. That's basically it. Um, there's no one that's better or worse. Each of them have their rules um, for how to govern. You can have, there are actually businesses that are million dollars or so businesses for the ease of running their business. They actually will stay a sole proprietorship, just keep it on their personal tax return, believe it or not. Um, they have other ways of protecting themselves, like I said, insurances and such. So then you have businesses who, um, they're still in their startup phase. They may not have turned a profit. I'm, you know, I'm loving the fact that more and more big names, like we've just recently heard about Uber um, and such, where you, they've been around for years. You would have thought, I would have assumed that they would have turned a profit already, but they just recently turned a profit after being around for a while. Um, and, you know, these are corporations. So again, don't, oh, there's more reasons than tax income etc as to why you might pick any particular one this is why you would need to get with not only an attorney but also tax professional possibly even your accountant as well because um in your insurances and then of course um i would even go so far even your financial advisors because again there's your personal goals in addition to your business goals that you always want to always look at and keep in mind when it comes to how you do all the activities that was so good. I mean, you said a mouthful. And I think that the people who were confused on those business structures and those entities have a little bit more clarity now. I think you even already answered the follow-up questions that oh, I, I did. had, which, <laughs> which in the beginning where it was basically like, you know, some people don't know like if they have a real business or not, if it's a side hustle, but you already said, look, if you bring it in a dollar, okay, you need to start early on, have a business account, have yes. all of these things set up because you never know where you're going long term. And I love the fact that you have been gathering me <laughs> personally because I'm also still learning and growing. So no matter what phase you're in, you kind of need somebody, you need that expert that's on the other side saying, hey, Keandra, it's time to transition to an escort. Hey, Keandra, have you considered this? Hey, hey, hey. Because if you don't, you just don't know certain things if you don't have the business acumen or don't have the experience of you know this and it's your just your first time so i think my follow-up question for you would be because you used to work at the irs <laughs> i'm not saying
saying that, you know, you should say or do anything illegal because we're talking about legal things here, but are there any legal hacks to paying less taxes when it comes to business or something that people should consider in regards to these different business entities, depending on where they're at? Um, so before I answer that, <laughs> I do want to also kind of put in because, um, you know, I kind of talked on um, when you're starting, but I also want to just really quickly for those of you, because I find now um, that I'm even further along in my business journey, those of us who are in more of like the growth stage of your business, because um, this kind of leads into what I'm about to go at for the question that you just asked about some of the different IRS strategies to how to get you know, lower your tax liability. Eventually, once you do those initial consults and everything with everyone, and you might be managing it on your own or have everything outsourced, when you start doing abundantly well, and I'm talking about once you are a person who is in the multiple seven figures and those eight figures are looking at your door, this is when you might wanna start looking um, and saying to yourself, when do I start bringing everything in house? If you haven't already. So that's a, that's a big, say big more girl, about that. Say that's a more. big, that's a big girl, big guy conversation. Um, and I do feel that, you know, a lot of us now are starting to be more in that space as well. And I don't know if those conversations are being had, um, you know, by us for us and that you really can't, you should definitely always get assistance, get help, but it's something different when you have someone 100% dedicated to your numbers, to your finances. So, you know, I always tell folks, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a projects girl and I love working with people who is at the beginning and when they're growing. But I do tell folks, you know, I have had a few people, once they got to their multiple seven figures, they've graduated me and I was okay with that because they've hired in-house bookkeepers and they've hired in-house CPAs um, because that person now is 100% dedicated to their financials. And honestly, the growth that they've had um, require someone to be, just be able to maintain it all on a daily basis, not so much now on a weekly or a monthly basis that, that does not suffice anymore. Um, so therefore they just, and they also too, just need to always have that access, that current up-to-date access, because so many things are happening so rapidly all the time. So when you find that you are growing, this, these, and these are fantastic challenges i wouldn't want to say problems they're just challenges to have problems it's, to have problems. right 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 when you when you when you when you get to that space you really do have to start thinking how do i start bringing everything in-house and that goes not only just for your financial team i would say for your administrative team and anybody else that you have started outsourcing the more and more you start bringing everything in-house that's how you truly start to create the real culture of your company and you start to see how your company is going to go from being of a space of starting and growing to now creating what's going to be its longevity. So that's the, I'm going to just put a pin on that part. So now we're going to talk about hacks and strategies. So a part of having longevity, <laughs> yes. um, I will say when it comes to taxes, um, the conversation of tax and finance is a, always an interesting one to me because at the end of the day, they kind of live on two different sides of the road. And the reason why I say that is, is that an awesome financial plan is going to be horrible for taxes in the sense of if you're making substantial amount of money, right? Your business is just booming in revenue and in profits. Unless you can find somewhere else to put that money into, the IRS is going to say that that is taxable income ultimately, and it will be taxed. So, so on the flip side, when you want to, um, oh, you know, not have to pay taxes. Now you have to start having other conversations. Well, are there ways for us to get money that is not taxable? Sure. You can possibly leverage lending opportunities. So that's always a possibility because money that is borrowed is not taxable. So there's that, but, we're getting, but again, that financial side, the money is borrowed. 
and it needs to be paid back. And you also want to avoid interest. So <laughs> there's that. Um, you know, so then it becomes, okay, do we try to qualify for some credits? Sure. But usually a lot of the credits, especially in the business world, um, is either going to be about infrastructure. So that means building new buildings or, you know, warehouses, roads, if that's your thing, maybe bringing in cars and fleets, whatever the case may be. Um, so aid into transportation or such, something massive that's going to help out the economy of your town or maybe your state or even your region, right? But listen to what that sounds like. Sounds like a lot of expenses and costs to me in order to offset that with a credit. So it's a lot of you kicking money out on the front end and then getting it back in a reimbursement, but you could do that. So that that's what some people do and they negotiate it that way. And they'll say, okay, I kick out this money and then I get it back as a tax credit. Tax credits are then, you know, basically free money. Okay, cool. And then that's a way to kind of strategize and use it. So if you're doing like any kind of employment or any kind of initiatives that's going out, federal, state, local, that will allow you to qualify for any kind of credits, whether we're talking about certain kind of hires you might be able to do, setting up your headquarters maybe in a certain location that could lead to a certain deduction or credit. Those are some ways to kind of shield money into your business that will ultimately not be taxable. But other than that, it's very much so it's very much so the more money you make you are going to most likely be paying some taxes of some sort and you just really would have to start really thinking about some of those questions that some people like this is why people talk about like the offshore business <laughs> yeah. but but that's a very real thing and it's not that it's you know it's not a scammy thing it's just that okay case, case in point a lot of businesses are set up in te texas and delaware why there no state income tax. It makes sense. <laughs> it's a way to avoid, you know, where some of the states are charging anywhere from, you know, 5%, 6%, et cetera, on my profits. And if I could save that simply by moving and that doesn't change how we operate, why not? Why wouldn't I do that? So those are some of the things that you can do. Um, on a more personal level in the business world, if you ever notice a lot of wealthy people are married, right? If you really pay attention to it, they are married. Talk Doesn't mean they're happy it, about it, but about notice, it. That, the, notice that they married and notice that they'll get me. Some people will be like, dang, you just got out of that relationship and you got married again, like in the same year, why? I'm able to shelter more of my income under a married filing jointly status than I am single. There are more credits available to me as married filing separately than I am single. We, um, as far as the state taxes are concerned, I'm able to shelter more of the wealth with my spouse if I am married than if I had passed away single. <laughs> so there, so when I tell you. <laughs> They're not trying to hear you. They're not trying to hear you. <laughs> Sometimes it's so much more to this thing than a ring. <laughs> Say it again for the people in the back. So much more to this thing than a ring. You can write that down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, that's really good. Yeah, please continue. Keep, go ahead and finish your thoughts. But yeah, but um, so, you know, outside of location, marital statuses, and again, really utilizing not only just on a federal level, but a lot of times like those local and state benefits. I don't know if you guys remember when Amazon was moving its headquarters and every single state was losing its mind, offering basically their firstborn child to try to let them come in to, to their state and to their town. Why? Why? Because them coming in, they're bringing in employment taxes and jobs. Every politician worth their salt always run on several things, education, employment, right? So if you bring in Amazon, who we all know, we all are guilty of prime, 
<laughs> we're all guilty of the crime, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, that's jobs on jobs on jobs, and they know that. Not only that, but that's going to be employment tax. That's going to be property taxes. Amazon brings warehouses. Amazon's bringing their headquarters. Oh my goodness. You know, Amazon is now bringing sales tax into it, 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 it's it's all this revenue that's now coming into that state of course i'm going to give you all these credits because in the long run you're helping me out i say that to you as a business owner because um a lot of times those of us who are in a smaller place because you'll say well i'm not amazon no well, here's the thing this is why you need to be active in your local and your state politics because when they're having those conversations in those town halls, you may not be bringing in 2,000 jobs like Amazon, but you may be the person who is in a position to hire 20 more people. And therefore, when they start talking about credits and deductions and such that could very much so impact your business, you should be in the room having that conversation and they should honestly listen because just like Amazon, you, you are an employer as well. Mm. And if you're not, you're, you, if you had that idea of when my business expands, I can be, then you're a part of that economic development solution. And taxes is a huge part of having that conversation and negotiation that benefits you and benefits your town. I think what you're speaking to is just encouraging everyone, including myself, to think bigger, think expansive, think beyond where you currently are. If you think, oh, it's just, I can't stand when people are like, oh, it's just my little business. It's just my, no, it ain't just nothing. You know, like speak positivity, know that there's so much more to you and to your business than it's just, you know, you doing a small thing. Like it's, it can be life-changing depending on what industry and what niche you're in. And so that's what I love about working with Chanel is like, she's always encouraging me to think outside of where I am now. Like, okay, in a year from now, in five years from now, where are we trying to go? What are we trying to do? Have you thought about this? Okay, because who trying to pay all this money in taxes? Not I, not I at all. But I think if you, for the people who are listening, I think the point is to take what you can regarding where you're at, but also don't just think about it from that perspective, have enough vision to see yourself on a larger scale, making more money, having more employees, you know, having warehouses and spaces and doing things that you probably never thought that you could potentially do. Um, Cause I never even wanted to own a business and yet here I am. So you never know what is going to transpire in your life. And so Chanel, um, cause I want to respect your time. Cause I know you got to pick up the little one. Can you give <laughs> us one tip or one thing, actually just one thing that you wish people would know, or they would do in regards to say, for instance, they were a small business owner in regards to, um, their taxes. And then we're going to play a game because you know, I can't let you leave my show without having a little bit of fun. Of course. So this goes to my dualpreneurs. Because this, so basically, if you're not sure what a dualpreneur is, for those of you who are listening, that's someone who is still working like a W-2 job while they're still growing their business, right? And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And for those of you who are, you know, paying your business, your business is profitable. My dualpreneurs, I need for you to start making sure that your W-4, because that's on the federal level, you are withholding enough. And then for my, and then for my, you know, all my business owners out there, you know, one of two things, make sure you're paying your estimated tax payments or just be ready for when the number comes out, when it's time for us to file. Because be ready. Only, <laughs> because, 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 and I say that because many a times, you know, People are doing well. You're doing you're doing well, right? And when December 31st, if you, if you operate on a calendar year, which most people do, right, comes, that's it. There's very little things that are left to do. Yes, you could do put money into a retirement account, but here's the thing. Um, a lot of times most business owners. Um, who are doing substantially well, you're usually between that 20 some percent, 22 percent, 
34, 39%. You're like 22 up tax bracket, right? Meaning that for every $10 or so, you know, you need to come up with $4, <laughs> right? Like, so it's like you, you would need $10 for $4 of tax basically. So therefore, if you're struggling, if you're shocked by this tax number, and then we come to you and say, well, you could try to, you know, mitigate that by putting it into your retirement. If you're fine with that, to bring down that balance and you, you have no issues and you don't need it for the cash flow, go ahead, bring down your tax bill. But from what I have experienced, a lot of folks who are like, you know, who are upset about the fact that they owe anything at the end, um, cause they wasn't anticipating having to have such a high bill. The cash flow is not there to then put it into um, a retirement account to bring down the the liability. So you know, at that point, it becomes well. Had we broken out the payments over time, that was you know, it's something that could have helped. And I know for some of you right now, you like you know, read me. Then I know, <laughs> I know. And this is not, this is not to get on you, but I will say this is for all my fellow tax professionals. Um, we just came out of this, you know, not too long ago, um, you know, with filing and everything. The biggest thing is, is that those estimated tax payments really are a thing. Do try to send in something. The easiest way to figure that out, if you're not sure, is if you have ever filed before, look at the total tax number on the second page of the 1040, split it by four, and then that's at least at a bare minimum what you need to send in, at a bare minimum. And, and then you may need to send in that amount plus 10% more if you make over, I would say like 150, 60,000 somewhere, right? But if you're if your taxable income is a little bit lower than that, at least that number divided by four total tax. There you go. That's a minimum. If you're doing exceedingly well, you might need to send in even more than that because it could be different than it was the year before. But sending in something way better than nothing, you won't be surprised by how much. Otherwise, yes, you are going to owe. Oh, Will there be a lot of things that we could probably do come April or March or whenever you come after the new year's done? No, not really. Um, best time to have those conversations usually is if you can, first and foremost, I will say in the summer, right? So it's only been a few months from after the main tax deadline. So in the summertime will be the first best time. The next best time after that would be around third quarter. And at the absolute last minute, I would say November, December, but that is cutting it close. To get in the third quarter is not, it, it, that's a that's a normal time because a lot of people go on vacation and such, but do understand people are going to be kind of busy around that time too, because that's when S corps are due. And right behind that, that's usually the extended um, deadline for 1040s and corporations. So just be a little sensitive to that, but summertime is like dream ideal because now we're in half we're like halfway through we got a good set of numbers to be able to look at to see kind of what's been your trend and to really navigate and you know play with some things and some options so yeah that makes hey, those a taxes. lot of sense Woo! i mean there's a lot to this but i think the key is to be as informed as possible right you don't know what you don't know, but you know, when you got somebody giving you gems and giving you the game, y'all better be writing notes. Y'all always tell y'all, y'all better take notes from my <laughs> <laughs> So Chanel, I know there's going to be so many people who want to stay connected with you after watching this episode. So please tell people how to stay connected with you and even some about, you know, potentially some of the services that you may have to offer. The best way to stay connected to me is be Instagram or YouTube at NTFS Global. Um, so it's the same on either one. The website is NellTaxAndFinancialSolutions.com and then you can go to the contact page. Um, consultations, main services I usually do is a lot of resolution work. So if you have any notices from the IRS or from any of your states um, nationwide, here to assist. And then, um, you know, advisory work, planning work, 
I also do workshops and facilitations as well for any conferences, virtual or in person. And, um, oh, we also have, a, I have a books. I have tons of books, books, but the latest one is out is this one position to pivot. That one is right here and is available to ship. So you can definitely purchase that as well. Um, and that, that's pretty much it for right now. <laughs> she reminded me of all of the things that she has and does she said i'm a six-time author i said okay well you better tell us how many books you have <laughs> okay so i love that i love that so before we go real quick let's play a game a quick game of would you rather and why so this is just a game where i'm going to give you two options you tell me which you would prefer and quickly tell me why you prefer those things are okay. you ready all right, let's go. All right, let me get my note card here because you know you gotta be on brand. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is, would you rather see into the future 10 minutes or 150 years into the future? Say, I would say 10 minutes. And the only reason why is just because um, 150 years, I won't be here to really do anything about it. And, um, you know, I'm okay with whatever the world is going to become after I'm long gone. I hope whatever I'm doing now plants good seeds and some of my peers, I hope we are planting good seeds together. So in 150 years, it, you know, some good things have grown from our time here, but I don't necessarily need to see it. I'm good with that. <laughs> okay. I love that. The second one is, would you rather give up air conditioning or heating for the rest of your life? So you're talking to a person who does the whole comforter with her foot out. I'm that girl. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. so that's what, <laughs> so you understand? Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm that, I am that person. So I can't, choose. all right. Choose. I, would, I, would, I, would, I would say if I had, to, if I absolutely had to choose, he would go. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you know what? I, I had the hubby. I'll use him. He gives off great heat. I'll use him. There, there you go. go. We can get him for warmth. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the third one is: Would you rather have Beyonce's talent or Jay Z's business acumen? Jay Z's business acumen all day. Oh, oh like, I mean, I can sing now. I can do that. <laughs> she said, "I." She said, "I can sing and dance and do all of the things." I can, I can sing. I can do. With. I can do that. Like, like, but what? And I mean, I have his business sense. I definitely like. I have a lot of that too. But I mean, what I think Jay Z brings to the table that I absolutely love is that. Um, he's honestly the kind of millionaire, like, well, he's a billionaire I would love to be, which is that we all know he has it, but he's so, like, I feel like I can totally go up to Jay-Z right now and have a conversation with him. It's not, he does not allow the billions to keep him from being unrelatable. That's so great. Yeah, he's definitely relatable for sure. Yeah. Number four, would you rather have a full phone battery or a full tank of gas? I'm going with tank of gas because I'm good for my phone dying. <laughs> Cause uh, yeah, it'll just have to be with it. And you know what? Cause the, the, the workaround is Kindle <laughs> and, and, and PDFs and all of that. Boom. There you are. And those little, you know, those little thumb nimbles that they used to have. All, put on all your of that. Like I'm doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Cause what we're not doing that. is biting my tongue as I eat. No, that's not going to be an option. We need to that's... eat fully without interruption. I love that. 
So thank you so much, Chanel, for playing a fun game of Would You Rather with me. You know I'm going to have to come back and bring you for part two because we already talked about some child custody, taxes, relationships. We're going to have her back for a part two, y'all, because it's going to be juicy. So thank you so much for You're being welcome. one Thank of you the for having kids. me. Thank you. You're very welcome. You can't even sit up here and tell me that you didn't learn something new. I have been working with Chanel for years now, and I still learn something new from what she just dropped. I mean, she killed it, dropped gem after gem after gem, and really helping us elevate and go to the next level when we're talking about business, the different entities, the legal hacks, what you should and should not be doing, the mindset that you need to have as a business owner, all of that matters. And this is coming from somebody who has been a full-time entrepreneur for seven whole years at the time of this video. I still can't even believe it. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you learned something. I hope you can share this with someone else who needs this information. And I will see you in the next episode. Be blessed. Bye.